It was a time in the late 60s, early 70s, when you wanted an actor, and I now came to the point where I said, okay, if I'm going to have trouble with studio pictures, I'll write for them. I work with Mario Puzo, work with a lot of people. I'll write, give me the cash. You don't have to put my name, but when I make my own films, I'm going to make my own films, no stars, okay? And I'll get an audience out there, okay? And, but they're going to be my films. No actor is going to come in and say, I want you to change this line. I want to do it. I said, none of that, yeah. okay? So, sure enough, uh, for instance, I had worked for, uh, what's his face, on a picture at MGM called Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. Um, the one who did... Uh, Sam Peckinpah. Uh, Sam. You know, and Sam was always drunk, yeah. you know? And I came in, and I thought I had some really good stuff, you know? And he looked at it, and he said, ah, it's not bad, man, you know? And they were paying me pretty good. He said, I'm going to send this up to the front office, see if this is okay. I said, do whatever you want, pay me my money, that's it. I'm not interested. Who's running the studio? A bunch of guys from, from Wall Street who don't know yeah. damn about anything. The old big bosses who really understood movies. So you felt that, that transition, uh, the uh, end of the studio system with the Xanox, the guys that really loved uh, the yeah. films. And, and, and not that, but they had... The Wall they, Street guys that took over. Uh, they destroyed Hollywood. They really destroyed everything. You know, all they were looking at was the numbers, the numbers, the numbers. And and you know what? They wanted you to make a movie that was like the one that was successful last year. You know, and it wasn't for me. So I wanted to do my kind of thing, okay? Now, white American actors were expensive, good actors. And I didn't have big budgets. But among the African-American community, there was so much talent, great talent. I mean, truly great talent that wasn't being used. They're playing maids and chauffeurs yeah. and, you know, and fall guys. It was horrible, you know? So I came up with this idea. I said, I'm going to get six of the most famous black football players in America. I said, I'm going to make a picture called The Black, the Black Six. Six. I, just aside, Tarantino told me once that he watched The Black Six over 20 times in his life. I said, you know, I've only watched it twice. <laughs> it, it, it has some kind of, I don't know what, because I look at it and I say, oh, I could have made it better here, I could have made it better there. I could, but somehow, just recently, he played it at the Grindhouse, his theater in Hollywood, and the audience went crazy, you know? And I can't figure out what the, the real appeal of that film is. I, uh, I went to a festival, I was a guest, uh, they honored me at a festival in, uh, Spoke, uh, in, not Spokane, Washington, where the University of Washington was. 1,500 students at 11 o'clock at night came to see the Black Six. And some white kid, my wife was standing next to me, you know, you signed the, uh, the, the things. And this white kid came up to me, who was a postgraduate student in cinema, very nice, very bright. And he said, will you sign this for me, Mr. Semmer? I said, sure. And he said, you know, the Black Six changed my life. And, and you know, and, and you know, my wife and I looked. At first, I thought he was putting me on or something, but he was dead serious. And he walked away. And I, my wife said, oh, "He's a white kid from Middle America. How did the Black Six change his life? You know, it was it really incredible. In any event, um, the picture grossed more than you could ever imagine." United Artists brought me to New York. They were distributing. Yeah. They brought me to New York. It was raining on a Friday night. And I was at the Taft Hotel, which was on Broadway. I looked down at all the theaters. 
they had McQueen in a picture, they had this, there was a, a line that went all the way around the block in the rain to see the Black Six. It was incredible. So, after that, I came up with an idea. I used to go and visit this guy. There was a, a strip joint, you know, it's a strip. There was a strip joint on Sunset Boulevard called The Body Shop. And, and it was the classiest place. And I didn't go in to watch the girls. I went in because the man who owned it was a neighbor of mine. Very wealthy guy, very nice guy. And sometimes at night, I would go in there and sit in the back and we would play gin. You know, he, he was big on gin. I love to play gin rummy. And we'd sit and have a drink. I'd have a Coke or whatever. And we'd talk to me, he would like to talk about it. And I liked the guy. Well, every once in a while, this black pimp would come in and he'd say, hey, how you doing, Jimmy, how are you? And one of the girls who was a stripper was his girl, okay? This guy would sit down and he would talk about the stock market. He'd talk about politics. He was a black pimp, but the wild outfit of the 60s and 70s, they were crazy with the car and the whole thing. He had a big Lincoln whatever out there. And I, and I was always amazed. And this guy only went to school through junior, junior high school. Didn't even go to high school, okay? And how he had such intelligence. And I said to myself, I said, now, if this guy was given a chance to go to school and learn, he could become president of the United States, right? Or, not really, I didn't think president back then, but I thought, he, 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 well, no, he could be a, an executive, a CEO of a major company, he could be whatever. But look at the brain he has, how smart he is. So I went home one night and I thought of a fantasy. I said, here's a guy who lives in the valley, the San Fernando Valley is on the other side of the hill, and he dresses very nicely. His wife and two children, they have a very nice house. His wife and two children, his wife thinks he works in computers, okay? But at night he goes out and he is the candy tangerine man. He's a pimp, but he's not a bad guy. He never takes a girl and makes her into a whore. He only organizes the ones that already are, and he makes sure they're taken care of and whatnot, and he's making good money, and he's making good deals. When I went to United Artists, I said, oh, what's your picture about? I said, what's well, a pimp? He said, yeah, but who's the good guy? I said, the pimp. They said, are you crazy? They said, are you crazy? You made a hero out of a black pimp? They said, even the black neighborhoods are going to tear up. They're going to burn the theaters down. Okay? You know? Yeah. I said, well, I said, this, this guy, but this guy's very special. At night, he goes back up on the hill, takes off his clothes, puts on a nice button down, nice business suit, gets in a nice Chevrolet, and drives home. Okay? That's his job. All right? Well, <laughs> I got to tell you. The candy, I don't know, I'm sure you've investigated, the candy tangerine has become this incredible, it's unbelievable, the mail, everything that happens, the book, I don't know if you read that book the British guy wrote, Ten uh, Taboo Breakers. It's ten directors who he claimed changed Hollywood. We, we brought exploitation to uh, yeah. Uh, to the present day, which is all uh, oh, Hollywood is exploitation today. And he talks all about the candy tangerine man. Now, I was so close for so many years to Austin Wells, and the thing that gets me is that I understand Austin now. This guy wrote a book, the whole chapter is about the candy tangerine man, the metaphors, the symbolisms, the this and the other. And when I saw the guy, I said, look, I shot it in 10 days, 16 hour days. 
I wasn't thinking about metaphors or nothing. I just was getting this picture in the can the way I wanted it. And I remember Orson. Orson always used to tell an interviewer, he said, you want to interview me? Four questions. That's it. And no questions on Citizen Kane. And he would never answer, talk about Citizen Kane. Talk to me privately, but he never. And I finally realized why Orson would never talk about Citizen Kane. Because he couldn't answer all these questions about the symbolism, yeah. about the this, because he, he, frankly, he never intended anything of that. He was making this crazy, wild film, you know? So that's the way it went down. I made another film that Sammy Davis Jr. and his manager financed. It was called Lady Coco. Why? Because the girl was managed by the uh, Sammy Davis's organization, managed her. And that was a huge success. Lola Falana was a great talent. And after that, I had an office on Sunset Boulevard and one day I came to my office, I walked in and there were black people sitting all over my floor, sitting on the stairs going upstairs, and they were from an organization called CORE, C-O-R-E, and the representative said, we want you to stop making black pictures. I said, they said, you are white. They said, and you do not understand the black experience. So you shouldn't be making black pictures. Years later, this is just last year, Bill Cosby, I don't know if you know who Bill mm -hmm. Cosby, Bill Cosby, you know, I do a seminar at USC once in a while. Bill Cosby has a group at USC of young black writers, maybe about 40 or 50 of them, in a group that he sponsors to learn about writing. They're all in their early to late 20s, very bright people. I was selected by Cosby to be on a panel. Now the man to my right is a, is a black director named Frank Oz. Very respectable, very good. The man to my left is the actor who played Jintu Junta in that uh, Haley thing about the, the black slaves, if you remember years ago. Anyway, so there's three of us. Now, you can understand, I'm the only white guy in the whole thing, and this is in the Spielberg school. And they're all saying to these black writers, look, use your experience. You should only write from what you know in life. You're, you know the black experience. You grew up. You have to use and take from that to write. You don't believe that. And I could see here, are the I could see the faces of these kids. Maybe 30 years ago, that would have been a wonderful talk. But you want to know something? So now came my turn. Now everybody a little bit tense. The director a little bit tense. I said, I'm going to tell you something. I went to see Star Wars, and I love Star Wars. I said, I didn't know if the man who wrote Star Wars was black, green, purple, what color he was. All I knew was he had a great imagination, and he used it, and he made a terrific film. And they all were quiet, and all of a sudden, the students all go, yeah, yeah. I said, you got to use your imagination as a writer. And, and it changed everything in the room, you know?